Hello, my name is Tom and I will present you Brotherhood and Unity. Nah, I can talk like this. It's much better. This will be an informal presentation of the Brotherhood and Unity, a game which was kickstarted recently and will be published in a couple of months. So, uh, while you are waiting in this lockdown situation now you will be able to see a bit about the components and a bit about the quality of the game i'm i can tell you right now i'm very excited and having seen the game firsthand i love the way they've packaged it it's even better than i expected it to be but let me show you i won't do an unboxing video because i already unboxed it for the purposes of creating a Kickstarter video. But what I will show you is the contents of the box. Let's go. Here's the box in all its glory. See? And the reverse side. Ah. One caveat, these plastic bags did not come with my version of the game. These are my own, but I'm not sure will it be included in the Kickstarter version. Here are some counters representing the control value and the foreign attitude. Here are the control markers. Here are the Serbian units. And these are Croatian units. And Bosnian units. These are the dice. Each player gets one die. Yellow is for Serbian player, blue is for Croatian, and green is for Bosniak. These are 10-sided dice, starting from 0 to 9. Now we have Bosniak and Serbian and Croatian cards. We will get into those a bit later. Okay. Here's the rule book. These are some images of the Sarevo getting destroyed. These are various types of units. Control markers, explanations on victory conditions, on sequence on play. You can download the rule book from the Kickstarter website. You also get a player aid, one for each player. Here is Bosnia and Herzegovina divided into regions and these are the victory conditions for each player. Yellow regions are condition victory condition for Serbian, green are for Bosniak and blue are for Croatian player. Practically the whole idea of the game revolves around capturing your own national regions. If you can't do it by the end of the turn four, then the player who was the nearest to achieving that goal is the winner. On the other side there are explanations on sequence of play, capturing regions, safe areas, and then the map. It's a great looking mounted board, 32 by 22, 
standard map board. Will it fit into the shot? Barely. Yeah. This is Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here on this side, it's bordering with Croatia, and you can't see it, but on the north as well, it's bordering also with Croatia. On the eastern side here, it's bordering with Yugoslavia, meaning Serbia and Montenegro. Now, here on this side, you have an inlet map of Sarajevo, Sarajevo siege, which was siege within a siege, because these here are three Bosniak spaces, which were surrounded completely with Serbian spaces. And here was the famous Sarajevo airport, underneath which was a tunnel. And that was leading up to here. Yeah, here it is. To this side, towards Hajici, uh, where underneath um, the airport, the supplies were taken, people were also being pulled out, and then you had to walk over the mountain, Mount Igman, and cross over to this free zone in control by Bosniaks. That's that situation. So Bosniak will f mainly, for most of the game, try to keep these spaces in control or even possibly break out. It's not easy, I can tell you, but it can be done. In some situations it was done and it's not a pretty sight for the Serbians, but don't be fooled, it won't be easy. Then what you have here in the middle, so-called Srednja Bosna, Srednja being central, central Bosnia, you have a mix of creation spaces with blue color and Bosniak spaces in green color. At some moment, at some point in time, that will lead to Croatian player wanting to capture these spaces from Bosniak and vice versa, Bosniak trying to capture these Croat spaces from Croat. Uh, that will possibly lead to Croat-Bosniak tensions or even war within a war. And this is a very important region and has always been because it's in the middle of the country and it's a geographical center connecting all the major parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now on the north you have you have a very interesting situation. As you can see, Serbian spaces on the western side are within a sort of an enclave. They are not connected to Serbia. They are being cut in two here by Bosniaks, you see, in Posavina. And Serbians will probably have to connect at some moment in time with Serbia, otherwise they won't be able to sustain great amount of troops here. And so that usually leads to many operations being fought right here, near Tuzla, near Bosanski Brod, near Brčko. Here. On the eastern side, you have a region called Podrinje. Now, Podrinje was always a very important region in Bosnia, especially for Serbs, because it connects Serbians, which are residing here, with their motherland on the other side of this great river, called Drina River. This river was very interesting in the World War I as well, because on this river many battles were fought. This was the main... Uh, route of advance by the Austro-Hungarian forces in several battles in, in First World War. But now, in this Bosnia, uh, Bosnian-Herzegovinian war, these, re, uh, these spaces are important because, as you can see, majority of Bosniaks live here. And without capturing these spaces, there is a risk of being cut off from Serbia. And that's why Serbians will probably try to capture these spaces, some of them or all of them. And here you have Srebrenica, infamous Srebrenica, and Gorazde, which almost had the same fate as Srebrenica. Luckily, that didn't happen in Gorazde. This, as you can see, 
is a Bosnian enclave, very important enclave, which is very, very close to Serbia. It's practically disconnected from other parts of, of Bosnian territory. Now here, on the northwestern edge towards Croatia, you have another interesting enclave, that is Bihać region, Cazinska Kraina. It will start the game being completely surrounded, having four Bosniak spaces, surrounded completely by Serbs on this side, and this, these spaces are Kraina spaces. Those were also Serbian controlled spaces, because at the same time, Serbians in Croatia also started a rebellion against the Croatian state. So Serbians were uh, here on this side in Croatia, and Serbians were also on this side in Bosnia. And here, a couple of Bosniak cities and towns were completely surrounded during the whole period of the war. Now let's take a look a bit at the cards. Now since this is a card driven game, cards are very important. Now here's an interesting card. Alliance of Serbian Lands. Now, this card allows you to, to place three units of the army of Srpska Vojska Krajine. Those are the forces which are here in Croatia, in Krajina spaces, and you can place them in foreign units reserve box and deploy them from these spaces into Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, during the war, uh, Serbians from Croatia did help Serbians in Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, the idea was to make an alliance between those two entities. It never materialized, but nevertheless they've helped each other and uh, had significant troops, uh, especially here near the Kraina territory, uh, trying to destroy this Tazinska Kraina region. Road to Dinara. Road to Dinara is a very interesting story. Now, Dinara is a big mountain. Big mountain here on this side, creating a border between Croatia and Herzegovina and Bosnia here and this mountain is and was during the historical times a border dividing those two countries those two entities and even helped in stopping Turkish uh, Ottoman uh, Empire growing into into Croatia uh, what is very interesting about Dinara that during the winter it gets under a blanket of snow and whole Bosnia and Herzegovina gets under a great blanket of snow but Dinara becomes um, a very tough place to live let alone fight and what Croatian army succeeded in doing was using its engineering units pioneers units to punch uh, a road and to bring tanks and uh, mechanized and motorized units on top of that Dinara mountain. And that allowed Croats to attack first through Bosnia and then into Croatia, which was under occupation here in Kraina, and to change strategic situation in total. Because of this road through Dinara and the road to Dinara, they succeeded in creating this route of advance which led to capturing this town of Sanski Most and later getting very near to Banja Luka which ended the war. Sarajevo Tunnel. Sarajevo Tunnel, you need to see it when you come to Sarajevo. It's around here at the airport of Butmir and it's a great place, this side of the city, because here you have Elijah, you have uh, great, great uh, hotels, great places to 
reside and a couple of miles down the road you can find the entrance to the airport tunnel. This tunnel was dig between this Ilija part and this side around the Butmir where Bosniak people were living and it enabled Bosniaks to smuggle in people, food, ammunition and, and weaponry and it was a lifeline for a long long time. Well that's about it for me, for now at least. Um, this is all the free time I have at this moment in this situation of mine. I hope the game will come very soon and that you will love it and enjoy it as I do. So that's it. Good luck. Have fun playing the game and stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.